Okay, in this video I'm gonna give you tips on how to improve your sports photography. Let's go. Tip number one, angles. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you're taking the pictures from a perspective of looking up so it makes the athletes look a lot more heroic. Whether it's professional players or if it's your kid, you wanna you want to make them look heroic, okay? If you take the pictures at eye level, this is just not gonna look as good. So get down, sit down, lie down, do whatever you need to do and you, I tell you, the pictures will look much, much better. Tip number two, back button focus. So if you assign that button behind your camera to just focus, it'll improve your photography. Now, if you're just starting out, I wouldn't consider doing that for the moment being focused on everything else like compositions, the settings, etc. This is more of an advanced feature, but if you're out there uh, taking pictures for a long time now, you want to improve it, back button focus is the way to go. Tip number three, RAW versus JPEG. Now this is the eternal question. Should you be using RAW, should you be using JPEG? It depends on the situation. The bottom line is RAW is by far better. I mean, hands down, no one will question that, but it might not be the, the appropriate file format for everyone. So if you're just starting out, you're, if you're brand new, use JPEG. If you wanna take it to the next level and recover a lot more highlights and a lot more shadows, take more out of the pictures that you take and recover more details, then RAW is obviously the, the only way to go. So it's up to you, but yeah, you make that decision. Tip number four, ISO. Now, most, most cameras these days will let you pick a setting for ISO uh, in auto, meaning the camera will set uh, the ISO for you, for you. You don't have to worry about it, so you only have to worry about the aperture and the shutter, the shutter speed, okay? So that's a really good thing. Professionals use it all of the time, and the only reason, the only situation in which I wouldn't advise using auto ISO would be if the lighting conditions are always, always the same. So in that case, you set it yourself and you go from there, okay? Otherwise, auto ISO is the way to go. Tip number five, focus point. Would, the, the one I would suggest to improve your sports photography would be to using a single point focus, um, the center one, which is always the most precise one, and go from there, okay? In, I can show you in my Canon how that looks like, but most cameras should allow you to pick this this setting and uh, yeah, just use it. Single point focus, use the center. Tip number six, pictures need faces and in most sports, they'll, they'll need the ball as well, right? So you wanna make sure, let's say football, for example, soccer for you American friends. Uh, in football, you will want the picture to have the ball and a face. You don't want the player's backs turned to you because people don't connect with that. People wanna see faces, people wanna see what is happening with the ball. So make sure, remember to get the ball in the picture and faces as well, okay? That's important. Tip number seven, gear. So if you're investing in gear, I suggest investing in lenses before you invest in the body. Lenses will outlive camera bodies by far and they are what will make the, the, the pictures great. Cameras these days are pretty decent, but they're replaceable every two to three years, whereas glass, if it, glass, when I mean glass, I mean lenses. If lenses are good, they can, they can last you a lifetime, okay? So, glass before camera bodies. Tip number eight, get close, fill the frame. Now, one thing you don't wanna see in, in pictures is dead space, right? You just, it's gonna be parts of the picture that people are gonna ignore. No, fill the frame, close it in, Make sure only the things that matter are in the frame. Everything else doesn't matter. If you need to crop in the picture, crop it, but yeah, getting close, fill the frame. Tip number nine, focusing modes. So in sports photography, most, most, most sports will be fast action, so you wanna make sure you wanna use a focusing mode that will track the subject um, constantly, right? So you wanna use, in Canon it's called AI Servo. I don't know what it's called in different manufacturers, I'm sorry, but if you Google it, I'm sure you'll find out. I use Canon, so that's why I'm using uh, terminology terminology used by Canon. But yeah, AI servo is, is what you wanna do. Basically, if you're holding your back button focus, or if you're not using it, if you're using the shutter button to, to focus, if, if you hold it and you track the, the subject, 
it's gonna keep focusing while you have it pressed, okay? So yeah, AI servo is the way to go. Tip number 10, capture emotion. <clears throat> now, some of the money shots, some of the best shots you'll be taking in a, in a, in a sport, in any sport, will be of emotion because that's what people connect to, right? They wanna see emotion, whether it's someone happy, someone sad, someone angry, anything, any type of emotion. So let's say football, for example. After someone scores a goal, they'll be, they'll be cheering with uh, their, their teammates or you'll see in the crowd people cheering with themselves because they're happy that their team scored a goal. So be sure to, to capture that emotion. That's really important and it makes for great, great pictures. On the other side as well, if someone suffered a goal, for example, you'll see faces of disappointment and those make for great pictures as well, right? It's not just about happiness or sadness, it's about emotion, it's about understanding what's going on when the picture is taken. So emotion will be a, a really good thing to, to try and capture, okay? Tip number 11, chimping. So chimping in photography means when you take a picture and you constantly look at the back of the camera to see how it turned out. Now, if you keep doing that, then you're gonna miss the action, right? Chimping is okay just to make sure your settings are right or if there's a pause in the game, you wanna review your pictures, flag the ones you like and whatnot. But if you're constantly doing it, you're gonna miss the action. So try to avoid chimping as much as you can. Trust yourself, you know, if you've taken a lot of shots and you know that the settings are correct, you don't need to constantly be checking the back of the camera. Leave that for later, you don't wanna miss the action. Tip number 12, shutter speed. So if you're shooting athletes that are professional or if you're shooting kids, this will change obviously because athletes that are professional will move much, much faster. But let's say soccer, for example, you wanna freeze the action. So in order to freeze the action, I would consider using one one thousand of a second as a shutter speed as a minimum. If you can get it a little bit higher, great. If not, then don't. But Remember, freezing the action is important. You, wanna, you don't wanna have all those blurred shots. You wanna have tech sharp and uh, action frozen shots. Tip number 13, manual mode. Use manual mode, don't be afraid of it, okay? You don't want the camera deciding your settings. You want you to decide what settings you want for your shot. Now, even in manual mode, you can still use auto ISO, so you will only have to worry about the shutter speed and the aperture, but don't let the camera decide those two for you, okay? Tip number 14, be early. This should be very obvious, but in sports photography, you wanna get you wanna get to your place of shooting ahead of time, right? You wanna make sure you do some test shots, you wanna be there before the crowd gets there, maybe you need to get your accreditation. Some places won't even let you in if you're late, uh, problems happen like traffic, like something might happen that if you're there early, it won't matter because you'll have plenty of time to, to fix it, right? Be there early, it's just common sense, really. Tip number 15, use burst mode, high speed uh, burst mode, so you can take tons of pictures. Um, sports photography, you want to take a, a good sequence of photos until you get the right one. Don't worry about taking too many pictures, in fact, do take many pictures because you don't know uh, the ones that are gonna turn out good, so and you can delete them later. It's not like you need to develop film. These days it's all digital, so yeah, take tons of photos. Tip number 16, use a big lens. What I mean by big lens is one with a, a long reach. So I'd say around 200 millimeters at least, so you can get those close shots because you're gonna be standing far, far away and you don't wanna miss the action. So yeah, big lens so you can get all the, the action up close. Tip number 17, learn the sport. Knowing the sport will help you anticipate any action during the game and will also help you determine where your positioning should be to get a certain shot. So knowing the sport, knowing the rules will help you tons in photographing any sport really. Indoors, outdoors, it doesn't matter. Tip number 18, don't stop when the whistle blows. So what that means is when the game is over, it doesn't mean that you're your photos are done. There's tons of stuff happening after the, the referee has blown the whistle for the end of the match. And the same happens before the start of the match. So make sure you capture the action before, during, obviously, and after as well. 
So that's it. That's a lot of tips. I hope you enjoyed them. Um, did I miss something? I'm sure I did. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? What would you suggest for people starting out in sports photography? What tips would you give or for anyone that's already doing it? Let me know. I'd love to hear your comments. Thank you. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that thumbs up. It helps a lot. And subscribe to the channel. That way you'll be notified when new videos come up. And if you want to see more, just click right there. Thank you very much. See you later.